Hi everyone, thanks for watching this talk on assessment of prospective motion correction in the HCP aging study. I have nothing to declare. Navigator-based prospective motion correction for 3D encoded MRI is now being used routinely in large neuroimaging studies such as ABCD and the human connectome projects in development and aging. Prospective motion correction has been shown to improve image quality and morphometry in volunteer studies where subjects performed intentional head motion in scans with and without prospective motion correction. But PMC performance can be unclear when we only have the prospectively corrected image and the motion measurements. Having the uncorrected and corrected images is often considered an advantage of retrospective correction. In this study, we estimate what the HCP aging MP range would have looked like without prospective correction. And we do this using reverse retrospective motion correction. Reverse motion correction was proposed by Zarneisen and colleagues a few years ago for 3D encoded sequences. So in a scan without prospective correction, if we've measured the head motion, we can retrospectively correct the case-based data to improve the image quality. In a prospectively corrected scan, we can use reverse motion correction to go the other way and estimate what the image would have looked like without prospective correction. In the rest of the talk, I'll quickly go over the VNAV MP Rage scan and how we implemented reverse motion correction, show how we tested reverse motion correction in volunteer experiments to check if it provides a reasonable estimate of what the image would have looked like without PMC, and then assess prospective correction in the HCP aging data, where we saved case based data from 62 multi echo MP Rage scans using VNAV PMC and selective reacquisition. This was acquired at the MGH HCP aging site when we used reverse motion correction to assess improvements in image quality. This is a brief overview of the VNAV MP Rage sequence. In the gaps between image encoding blocks, we can insert these low resolution VNAV images and use those to estimate head motion and then update the field of view position before each image encoding block. Because the VNAVs are only acquired every 2.5 seconds, there can be uncorrected head motion between the VNAVs, and we can use reacquisition to deal with this by reacquiring the TRs with the most motion at the end of the scan. And this is a video showing how, as you add in those reacquired TRs, you can improve the image quality. The VNAV MP Rage scan had 0.8 mm isotropic resolution, and up to 30 reacquisition TRs were used and the scan time including that maximum reacquisition time was 8 minutes 22 seconds. For more details see this paper by Michael Harms. To do the reverse motion correction we first extract the prospectively applied motion updates from the VNAV DICOMs using this Python script. We then adapted RetroMoco box to handle reacquired data and to apply reverse motion correction by simply inverting the VNAV motion transforms. And the output was images with PMC and reacquisition, images with just PMC, i.e. with reacquisitions removed, and images with reverse motion correction. And in most of the comparisons, we focus on the acquired image and the reverse motion corrected image. Here are some examples of reverse motion correction with different types of movement. In this first example, there were two periods of continuous head movement. And here's the image without any correction and the retrospectively corrected image. Here's the prospectively corrected image from a scan with similar movement and here's the reverse motion corrected image showing that there are similar artifacts in this reverse motion corrected image to the actual uncorrected image. Here's another example showing that the artifacts you get in the reverse motion corrected image are very similar to the uncorrected image. And in this final example Again, we see similar artifacts in the reverse motion corrected image and the uncorrected image. This is a summary of the 62 HCP aging scans we have. So on the x-axis shows increasing levels of motion during the scan, and on the y-axis increasing difference between the reverse motion corrected and acquired images. So there were mostly scans without much motion, also a few with high levels of motion and often this was the same subject where they repeated the scan. 
And then we'll just look at some other cases, such as when there was head rotation, motion outside the center of case base, some effects related to respiration, and the benefits of reacquisition. So here's an example of a scan with very little motion. We see the acquired and the reverse motion graded image are very similar, and the image quality is good. A couple more examples showing nice image quality in these 0.8 millimeter isotropic resolution scans. This is the scan with the most motion we saw. Note that the scale is increased relative to the others. And we see the acquired image has some artifacts, but the reverse motion corrected image is significantly worse. Here's the repeated scan, it was actually the same subject. And again, there are some artifacts in the acquired image, but the image that we would have got looks substantially worse. And these were actually the scans with the most motion in the whole dataset. In this scan we see the subject was moving almost constantly. In the acquired image has some residual artifacts, but the contrast is generally good, and it's an improvement on the reverse motion corrected image. This is the repeated scan in the same subject. Again, there are some residual artifacts, but the acquired image is better than the reverse motion corrected image. Here's another scan where the acquired image looks nice with good contrast, and it's an improvement on the reverse motion corrected image. Here are some examples with less frequent motion. We see the acquired images have good quality. The first example shows some brief periods of movement. The second example shows some drifting during the scan. And the last example shows a change in position before the center of case space, which causes substantial blurring in the reverse motion corrected image. These are examples where there is rotation about the right left axis. And we see this can cause substantial blurring in the reverse motion corrected images. But the acquired images have good quality. In these examples, there was some significant motion, but it was outside the center of case space. So it didn't have much effect on the image quality in the reverse motion corrected image. These examples show how particular types of respiration can lead to artifacts in the VNAV corrected images. The VNAV motion measurement frequency could be too low, or there could be bias from non-brain tissue. Malta Hoffman has been working on brain-specific registration, which is expected to help with this effect, and you can see more details in posts of 3367. In these examples we see the benefit of selective reacquisition. As we go from the acquired image to the image without REAC, we see artifacts being introduced, so this shows the value of having period at the end of the scan for reacquiring the TRs with the most motion. So to sum up, reverse motion correction is a useful tool for assessing prospective motion correction in 3D encoded sequences. We convinced ourselves that it provides good estimates of the uncorrected image in tests with matched motion. In the HCP aging data, VNAV prospective motion correction improved image quality when there were high levels of motion, we saw large improvements in image quality, but also some residual artifacts. When there was occasional motion or rotation, that was corrected very well. In future work, we'd like to account for potential respiration effects on the VNAV tracking with brain-specific motion tracking, and assess the effect of the image quality improvements on morphometry. Thank you to my co-authors and to these funding sources, and thanks for watching.